Welcome to Electra Online. Airline tickets are a really good example for a demand function. Again, the price will be the driver, the demand will be the follower. In other words, the price tends to be the independent variable and the demand represents the dependent variable, even though in textbooks you'll see it the other way around. But let's say that a company, an airline company, is selling plane tickets between LA and New York round trip tickets, and if they set the price at $1,000, they will only sell 20% of their available seats. So the plane will only be 20% full, which is not a good way to run a business. But then if they drop it by $200, the number of seats that are sold increase by 20%. So from 20, we go to 40. If we drop another $200, it goes now up to 60 and so forth. So based upon that, we're supposed to graph this equation and find the equation, the algebraic equation for the linear demand. And in this case, the linear demand is pretty good because you would see then at the end, when you get to a low enough price, 100% of all the seats will be filled and you can't go all the way down to zero because there's only so much you can provide. There's only 100% of the seats. So let's try to graph that and see what that looks like. So at $1,000, we fill 20% of the seats. At $800, we sell 40% of the seats. At $600, we'll sell 60% of the seats. At $400, we'll sell 80% of the seats. And when the price goes all the way down to $200, everybody will want to fly. Well, not quite everybody, but enough to fill the entire plane. So if we connect all those dots, we see the linear equation. Of course, I was off a little bit here. Let's put it over there. Okay, so there's the linear function, the linear demand equation, at least the graph of the equation. So how will we actually find the equation? Well, we need to carry this all the way through. And if we carry this through, we go from 20 down to zero when we get up to $1,200. Now, again, that portion probably would not be realistic because even at $1,200, there would still be people wanting to buy plane tickets to go to New York and they will buy that plane ticket. So um, up to a small enough percentage, the linear function looks like it's a pretty good representation. Otherwise, of course, we would have a nonlinear function like that. Okay, what do we do next? Yeah, we need the equation. So we need price as a function of x, x being the demand, is equal to, now notice we have the intercept. So let's write it like this, y equals mx plus b. So that's the equation format of a linear equation in algebra with an x and a y axis. In this case, we'll have a p axis and an x axis. So the slope would be m times x plus b. So now we need to find the intercept. You can see the intercept will occur at 1200. So the price as a function of x is equal to 1200. What about the slope? Well, the slope is the rise over the run. In this case, the rise is negative, so this is the negative rise, and this is the run over here. So when the, the let's write it down, m is equal to the rise over the run. The rise will be negative, and how far do we drop? We drop a negative $200, and we have a run of 20%. So it's $200, negative 200 over 20%, or negative 20 over 2 or let's see here, we can simplify that. We could go negative 20 over 2% uh, or negative 10 over 1%. So that's kind of the ratio. So for every $10 drop, we sell an additional one seat. If there's 100 seats on the plane or 1% of the seats. So the slope would be a minus 10 over 1% times X. And then, of course, we need a plus here. And so this will be the equation we want. All right. So now uh, let's do an example. Let's say that uh, the price is $600. So the price P of X equals $600. What would X be equal to? Question mark. So let's plug that in and see what happens. Profit by 600. 600 is equal to minus 10 over 1% times the demand. Okay, so what we're trying to do here is we're trying to find x. So what is x going to be equal to plus 1200? So we're solving that for x. Well, first of all, we're going to subtract 1200 from both sides. So we end up at 600 minus 1200 equals minus 10 over 1% 
times x, and so that would be minus 600 equals minus 10 divided by 1% times x. And if we're going to solve for x, we need the 1% up here and the minus 10 down there. So minus 600 times 1% divided by minus 10 equals x. Now we need to simplify that, and let's see what we get. The minus cancels out. We have uh, that would be 60 times 1% or 60% equals x. So here you can see that if they, they give us that the prize is set at $600 and they want to know what the demand will be on the plane, we simply plug it into our equation, we solve for x, and we can see that then the demand will be 60%. Of course, graphically, we can see that if we're at 60%, the price would be $600. But typically, the demand is a result of the price setting. And so what the plane companies do, the airline companies, what they do is they see how the seats are filling up. If the seats aren't filling up fast enough and the time of departure is getting closer, they will begin to drop the price. More people will buy tickets. When the seat is, when the plane is almost full, then they start rising the, raising the prices because then they want to get a little bit more money for those final tickets. Those people that want to fly at the last minute, they're willing to pay a little bit more for the ticket. And so you can see that the price is continually changing, driving the demand, and that is how it's done. So, moral of the story, don't wait till the last minute to buy your ticket. This is what you do all the time. Well, sometimes we don't know when we're leaving. Well, <laughs> procrastination, call it what it is. <laughs>